our interview uh, series continues, and we're actually joined by one of uh, the newest members of the assembly, Ronis Bashot. Thank you very much for uh, joining us again on City and State TV. Um, how has the caucus weekend been going so far for you? Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I think it's been um, so far fast-paced, um, very interesting. I mean, it's uh, a lot of uh, new energy. Uh, given that we do have a new speaker and uh, we have a, a freshman class of 17 new members yeah. um, of which many are uh, uh, people of color and so forth so we're really excited uh, we have a lot of women yeah now a lot of, right. Right, a lot of women we need more <laughs> right we need more I think, I think you're actually the there's three uh, Haitian American yes. women too so. yes exactly we have three Haitian Americans uh, two from Long Island yep. uh, one from Suffolk uh, uh, which is uh, Kimberly Jean-Pierre yep. one from Nassau which is Mikhail Solach who, who was the first Haitian in 2012 and I'm the first in New York City from yep. Brooklyn New York yeah so I'm, I'm go Brooklyn yeah go Brooklyn <laughs> <laughs> go Brooklyn I'm truly excited. I'm truly excited to come into um, uh, a situation where I feel that I can make immediate impact. Um, I, I have already spoken to the speaker. Um, he responds to tests, text. Um, I'm not sure if the former speaker <laughs> was able to do that. Very well. <laughs> well, that's a generational thing. <laughs> that's that's very silly. Let's right, give him okay, a break. Okay, let's okay, let's okay. give Shelly a break on that one. Okay, okay, we'll give him a break on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I truly feel that there's going to be some reform. Um, you know, one of the biggest things with freshmen is that, you know, um, we're, we're, we're hit with a, a very low budget, staff yeah. allocation budget, which makes it very difficult for us to operate. Um, I think, you know, there should be a level of um, a reasonable amount of budget so that we can have staff both in Albany and, and in our district office yeah. to do the work that we need to do. Um, I think we all, as assembly members, serve the same amount of uh, people, right. same number of people. Yep. Um, we all got elected the same way. We all serve the same number. So I think um, that's something that certainly needs to change, very similar to how they do it in Washington, D.C. You know, everybody comes in, they have a staff budget, same way with the Senate. Right. They have a staff budget that's equal. Everybody is, ex you know, um, can do what they need to do. So um, we're looking for that. We're looking to have more participation in the whole uh, bill process. Yep. Okay. Being able to um, draft bills and having those bills come onto the floor, um, you know, alleviating the little politics and so forth. And again, that will be um, that will be a way to see how well our speaker um, will allow for innovative ideas to come to the floor um, and that, you know, we can have, we can go against, uh, not go against the, the, the governor, but if we have to step up. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's right. You don't work for him, you work for the people. Right, right. But if we have to kind of step it up and have to address the governor um, in terms of budget cuts or having to restore uh, funds that were taken away, um, I feel that we're in a position where we're a little bit more free to do. I'm curious as to the fact that you get, you know, you get elected, you come in with a certain, you know, set of, of, of okay, let me let me find out where, you know, this is and this is and where I go, what's the procedure, you know, learning curve, you know, you're trying to do as best because you want to do things for your district, for the people that, exactly. that, that gave you the job that you asked exactly. for. But then all of a sudden you're, you're like, Bam! This thing hits you, and you say, "All right, so what do you do yourself to try to say, okay, so how do I fit here? How do I turn this around?" You're already talking really way beyond what I expected. You know, already you're focusing on what the speaker can do, so you're quick learn. I can tell that already. But tell me, how does that change the agenda that you personally had? So you had like maybe ten things yeah. at the beginning. Yes. So how does that? Are you feeling like is it an advantage or disadvantage? It's or an advantage because honestly. I was told that I probably would not have any bills introduced mm -hmm. or the chair of the committees would be the one who would take credit for any bills that they would be interested in. Um, I also felt that I would have to be um, subjected to a, a limited budget for staff allocation and just really not get my voice heard. I just said, they, people told me that my first couple of years... Wait your turn, kid. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah. Wait your turn. My first couple of years, I'm not going to do anything focused on the district. This is an opportunity to change the landscape of in, in, in Albany. This is a, this is an opportunity for freshmen to probably um, have a subcommittee. You know, we asked for that too. You know, so um, and take on a, a, a bigger leadership role. So 
totally changed. I did not know I was going to spend the last three days putting a budget letter request. <laughs> yes, I did that. I put in a budget request for $130 million. I put another budget request for um, $500,000. I put another one for $100 million. So I didn't know I was going to do that. So as and we I did it. So we're, <laughs> so we're streaming live and we're going throughout the state and God knows where we're, we're being reached at City and State mm -hmm. TV. What does that mean? So that it, what does that mean that you're going putting in is so that people understand those right. that are not so, familiar right so um so there's an opportunity where the assembly members can submit a letter of request for funding funding for projects funding for whether it's um, operational expenses or whether it's capital expenses um it could be for um, building roads building bridges um building homes centers or whatever or it could be for a research development program or it could be for uh building a, a new campus you know that's what it multiple, is yeah. multiple things so um again coming in as a freshman i did not have those expectations yeah. that i would even be allowed or even be considered for um to put in a budget letter request because i'm so new what do i know about you wait my turn I, I need to get a feel of the whole process literally i want to say I, I know five freshman members already have submitted budget letter request wow. and that's that speaks for itself um, so change is already happening as we speak, there you and, go. and I'm and I'm really excited. Uh, I'm really excited that I feel that I can really impact and be a real contributing factor to what goes on mm -hmm. in, the, in in Albany, as well as continue to keep the momentum and serve the people in my district. And they're looking. They're looking for me to have a, a bigger say in Albany. But we, you know, we're down doing our thing in the district, you know, with our one, two, three staff person yeah, <laughs> at, yeah. minimum <laughs> at minimum wage. At minimum wage. But we're doing the do because um, we we knew what we're expecting to get. Okay, right, 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 good. right. 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 And it's interesting, it's good to hear all this optimism coming from me that you're saying from your, your fellow colleagues as well. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think that when when the transition happened, I think a lot of people felt that Carl was the per, the pick because he um, would maybe be the strongest person to move things forward, not necessarily a status quo, but to move things forward in a stable way. But the more we've talked to people, the more we hear that um, he really is taking a different approach. Is there any other examples you can think of that maybe like how he, he is different than maybe Sheldon Speaker was, or Sheldon Silver was when he was Speaker, even though I know he was only Speaker for maybe like 30 days before right, as right. you've been a, a well, member? Well, I mean, he's here at the caucus. Yeah. I don't think to, um, Sheldon Silver um, appeared at the caucus. I mean, he's, he's, he's the face now, yeah. um, and he's everywhere. He's um, making strides in uh, working with uh, different people. He's made strides with the freshman class over and over. Um, so I would say that his presence is, is a big difference. Um, already committing to a bigger staff allocation budget. He, he had already expressed that to us yeah. as a major difference. Um, being able to consider our um, budget requests. So again, having us participate in a very, you know, very important process, I think is a change. Um, and and then also, um, you know, there were some movements in, in terms of committee assignments, and there's going to be some movement in leadership roles that we're already discussing, allowing freshmen to participate. So there will be some freshmen with some leadership roles. So I, I think all of this is great. It's it's new, and that's how it should be. Well, 42 percent of the of, of the assembly was actually elected after uh, 2009 and beyond. So now you're even younger in terms of seniority. Exactly. Is there a possibility mm -hmm. that the expectation level may be put too the bar set too high and too much demanded of the speaker, or is there no limit to the demands that let him tell you turn you down? Well, I don't think we we have too much of a high expectations. I think um, we did express that when we talk about reform, you know, we do not want to strip all the powers that many speakers in the past uh, who were white uh, who had. So we don't we, we're not looking to strip everything from him. You know, so we, we we want him to still have the ability to lead and have control over certain things, um, have discretion over certain things. Uh, we just want a little bit more transparency and account, and it takes time, yep. little by little. And so our expectation is not for him to turn things around immediately. Staff allocation budget, that's not that's not a big thing, you know. That's going to be what maybe two million dollars or something to raise that. And over time, 
things will be more of an equilibrium as seniors retire and then that funding will go to kind of make things a little bit more equal. Have so you had, have you had, I gotta ask mm -hmm. you, this is political insider <laughs> stuff, but have you had, as a new company, you know, the new kid on the block, or one of the new kids on the block, have you had some of the uh, senior members come out, uh, hey, you know, that's not the way we do things around yes, here? Yes, all the time. Really? Yes, and I was quite upset. I mean, it was to the point where. Do, do you think they did it because you're a person of color or a woman, or is it just in general that the arrogance of seniority? The arrogance of seniority. It had nothing to do with. Uh, because I got it from women, I got it from really? blacks, Hispanic, whatever. Um, it, it just has to do with seniority. Like, you need to wait your turn. Like, hey, I've been here and this is what we went through. It's like you go through a right to passage. And so that's changing. And, and I, I'm sure that it's very uncomfortable for some senior people who's been there for, who had to wait for 20 years uh, to get to where they are. And someone else coming in may not may not have to wait for 20 years. They may wait only five years, yep. you know, to get, let's or say. Or five months. Or five, all right, or five <laughs> months. <laughs> At the rate we're going. <laughs> so so um, I did get some of that feedback. And, and I'm like, you know, things doesn't have to be that way. And I'm like, you know, I'm not an ordinary freshman. You know, we, a lot of us come, and most of us, all of us, come with expertise, with uh, years and years of experience that we can certainly come hit the ground running, contribute to legislation or the way things are done. You know, I come from a background of education. I come from a, a science engineering background. I come from a Wall Street finance. So what does that say? I can deep dive in the budget immediately. And that's why I feel that I was in a position to put, to present a budget letter request, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what does it say? I, I understand policies and curriculums and so forth because I lived in the classroom and was able to teach the teachers. I understand the need for STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, math. So I pointed out in the budget things that were taken away a few years ago that's not going to help our children compete. So. We have many, many assembly persons or you know newcomers, new legislators who are coming with a, a wealth of experience, probably more experience than some people who's been here for a very long time who's been doing the same old, same old. And we, we have a new way of mobilizing, organizing, and pushing things forward. And to that point, I, mm -hmm. I think that you're very unique because I think the science, math, technology, that background is something that usually you don't see in a body, in a legislative right. body. You, do you find that your colleagues, as they get to know you, get to know about your background, they they actually look to you for that expertise? Oh yes, oh, certainly. I mean, I think um, one of the things that the speaker said that he saw some similarities between him and I because he he had some finance, some numbers background, yep. math, and so forth. And so yeah, I think they do look because that's a struggle, and um, people really don't understand how they can push that. You know, whether it's in our legislation, our policies, or in the budget. And so it's a change, you know, it's tangible for me because I lived it and yeah. I continue li li living it. You know, so, yeah. you, know uh, you know, folks like us, we're not supposed to know about numbers. Black folks <laughs> and Puerto Ricans and I think we're not supposed to, we don't know that. Right. We spend money, right, right. but we don't know how to do, deal with money and finances. I mean, exactly. that's the stereotype. Exactly, it is. So, it so is. you're breaking them all in every sense of the word. Yes. And, and, and I think that this is encouraging. And certainly, I love young people because I think that this is, you know, sometimes as viejos, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, because you're carrying, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah, viejos yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah. So the viejos already think that we know it all, and sometimes we don't know it all. Right. And we don't we don't have our mind so so hopefully the, in your colleagues in the mm -hmm. legislature we will also treat you as equals and invite that new way of thinking the way of doing things and get the hell out of your way right well think about it the speaker got elected not because of the viejos it's because there were innovative people in the room who spoke out and they 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 knew strategically how to mobilize votes I mean I mean you know I mean if you've been doing something uh, or you've been stagnant for so many years, you won't know how to mobilize votes. You won't know how to do that. But Carl was in a, you know, he's still young, he was in a very uh, strategic um, situation where the opportunity opened up where many young people, people, you know, were able to pick up the phone, make calls, and mobilize and organize. And that's the advantage that we bring to the table. So that 42% did 90% of the work. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Interesting. Yes. 
Ronice Pachot, thank you very much for joining us, and good luck, uh, and, and I hope you enjoy Caucus Weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Right. Power to the young people is all I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Best of thank luck. You. Thank, thank you.